Okay, so um, we're looking at Luke chapter five, and um, this is from verse onwards. It's very familiar incident where the Lord Jesus is, um, you know, uh, he sees Peter and uh, and his friends, and they're all there. It's near the lake of Gennesaret, and uh, he you know, borrows Peter's boat, one of the boats, and then he goes into the water, and he. Um, he shares, he's teaching the people. And after that, he asks Peter to do something which he has already done the previous night, and he's actually tired, right? And very unsuccessfully, he has tried fishing the whole of that night, previous night. And um, the word of God declares that, uh, you know, he uh, he was unsuccessful. They caught nothing. It says, uh, verse 5, they toiled all night. You know, that's Peter's own testimony. But the Lord is saying in verse 4, you know, you launch out into the deep and cast your net uh, down for a catch. Right? So you're basically asking him to do the same thing which uh, Peter had done earlier. Okay. And uh, without success and with failure, just looking at him, staring at him in the face. So the Lord asks him to do that. So, uh, you know, some learning for us here, you know, if the Lord were to tell us to go back and do some things that we had done earlier without good results, okay, um, how would we respond? Okay, uh, that's the question that I'm asking myself, you know, if I did not have a good response, if I didn't have a good experience for whatever reason, right? Um, and the Lord is giving a direct command and instruction, I'm led by the Spirit. And the Lord is giving us that conviction, saying, OK, go do that. OK, so how would we uh, respond to that? So the way Peter responds is, is, uh, is this, you know, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. So he's saying, you know, I've, in my experience, I've done all this. Uh, in my ability, I've done all this. but." And this has been the result. End result is uh, it's not good. Right? So nothing in me, nothing in my experience actually is telling me to go and do it again. In fact, everything in me is rebelling. I, the reason in me, the logic in me, the experience that I've recently had uh, is just is rebelling. It's just saying, don't do it, Simon. Don't do it. And in, in such a place, Simon says, Peter says, you know, Lord, at your word, nevertheless, at your word. And I believe the Lord, uh, we might face similar situations uh, where circumstances where, you know, um, the Lord is drawing us to do certain things, uh, commanding, instructing, do certain things which uh, we're not comfortable uh, or we have, in our human experience, it's not been great. Uh, how would we respond to it? Yeah. Uh, so maybe say, nevertheless, at your word, Lord, uh, I will do it. Right. It could be in ministry. Lord, I've prayed like this. I've ministered like this. I've not had results. But then, Lord, Lord you're again asking me to do the same thing. You know, I don't want to look like a fool. But, but Lord, nevertheless, at your word, I will go ahead and do it. Right. OK. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what is recorded here in Luke's gospel. Lord, we thank you that um, uh, for your instruction, Lord, for your leading uh, in uh, Peter's life. And so, God, um, so also in our lives, Lord, Lord, when you ask us, when you instruct us by your spirit, by your word to do certain things, Lord, Lord, may we also respond in the same way, God, nevertheless, at your word, no matter what is going against that decision, that choice, Lord, nevertheless, at your word. Yes, Lord, I pray that uh, such will be our obedience. Lord, such will be our sensitivity to your leading. Such will be our discernment that it is indeed your voice. And uh, such will be, may, may our faith also be as such, Lord. And may we say, nevertheless, at your word, we thank you, Lord, that uh, you are with us and you are continuing to lead us into all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' matchless name. We pray, Amen. Amen. Okay. So, life skills. How's it been so far? 
good, bad, ugly. <laughs> so we're looking at uh, life skills, and we, um, you know, we last couple of classes we looked at um, personal development, and also, you know, uh, having a plan uh, and breaking that plan into goals, and and these need to be reviewed, of course, to see how far we have, uh, how, we are, how far we have come, uh, close to achieving. I'm sorry, close to achieving those goals, right? So today, uh, let's look at chapter five. Which is um, interpersonal, which is uh, you know page sixteen. If you downloaded the notes, um, uh, okay. So Jeffina, <laughs> so useful. Subhashish, good. Okay. So chapter five, interpersonal communication skills. Okay. So let's take a look at that, and um, and uh, yeah, uh, and and see. This is something again, you know, which is something fundamental, which is something basic, and all of us have um, maybe a understanding of it. But um, yeah, let's just see, uh, you know, how we can actually sharpen this uh, this tool, right? Communication, right? Interpersonal communication. Well, the topic itself, you know, referring to um, a, a communication process or communication, um, yeah, you know, um, uh, communication that happens between people or two people, right? Or maybe uh, it between people. Uh, it could be one to many or one to one, so it's interpersonal. Okay, so um, we know that communication is uh, impartation of information and also receiving. So it means it's uh, normally when we say communication, we are we uh, we refer to the clarity with which somebody is speaking, maybe how articulate they are and how clearly they are presenting something but it goes beyond that it is also about how well it is received how well uh, the person who is communicate or who's actually sending out or presenting that information is also perceiving you know whatever uh, is whatever communication is getting back from the audience or from the other person Okay. So it is two ways. Communication is always two ways. So it involves the sending, it involves the receiving uh, of the uh, of the content, right? So uh, in other words, it means if it's verbal, it is speaking and also listening. Okay. So the one who's just just going on speaking, 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 and uh, not really making an effort to see and to understand whether it's being received. You know, is is actually a poor communicator. You know, somebody who's just downloading stuff. You know, let me just load this on you. You know, put it on you. Uh, I don't care whether you're receiving, whether you're interested, not interested, etc. You know, is is not really good communication. So, it's speaking and also listening. Okay. And um, yeah. So if uh, if we are uh, in the in the receiving part of this communication process. It means that I am actually, am I being a good listener, right? Am I clarifying? Am I understanding it the way it is actually being? Uh, uh, am I perceiving it the way it's supposed to be, right? All that is the responsibility of the one who is the recipient of the communication. So it's very, very, very active, right? When we say communication, it's active active especially when we say interpersonal communication of course there's there's communication through mass media and all that where uh, where the focus is on clarity of the message sent but not so much in you know uh, whether we are actually uh, you know uh, making an effort to see you know whether it's received you know that would come as a research later right okay so effective communication okay um, let me just uh, share the screen Okay. Um, effective communication. You know, what do you think? Is it important, necessary? You know, um, you know why does it even feature under life skill? You know, let's say a person is, uh, you know, working with machines, or uh, machines. You know, you're uh, you're working with machines. You're working with computers. Uh, you're a you're a through and through a tech person. Uh, would you would you rate communication as one of the skills that you would need require? What do you think? Uh, 
sorry what uh, what somehow we have to open our mouths <laughs> open our mouths or record information right send emails something has to be done right so we um, you know, even if it's a, you know a purely a tech kind of a work that we do you know there will there is a recording of information there is this sharing of information maybe digitally uh, so which means that you know information is shared information is recorded and in the form and it has to make sense it has to make sense to the person who's reading it so you know communication is an important skill and the well when you look at it you know generally you know in a in a in a in a work kind of a professional kind of a setting the well the higher the person goes or the great the greater the responsibility uh, meaning maybe the person is accountable to a you know to a task a project which involves people right so uh, a greater responsibility would involve people working for the particular project working for that particular um, you know ministry or effort ministry effort whatever so when when there are more and more people involved one realizes the criticality of this particular skill okay where there is a constant need to communicate effectively there's a constant need whether it, it could be verbal it could be written it could be uh, uh, in any other form right but there's there we cannot rule out uh, that um, you know communication is not required it is required even more so as and when our responsibility uh, increases you know and uh, and if you look at the word of god and if you look at the word of god is this it is all uh, truth communicated right it is truth recorded truth record communicated so uh, in fact if you look at um, i think if you look at book of acts right um we you know it's luke um and then look at book of acts chapter 1 verse 1 it says the former account i made o theophilus of all that jesus began both to do and teach until the day he was taken up after he had Uh, he through the holy spirit had given commandments to apostles whom he had chosen and etc and uh, he says uh, you know uh, in uh, so yeah so the former account referring to the gospel uh, and he's saying of all that jesus began both to do and to teach okay so uh, when it refers to an account he's just uh, referring to a record which he uh, the, he made the effort in order to capture all that uh, and uh, it and he did so and and here we are as the, as the recipient of all that that is the capture of Jesus what Jesus began to both to work, uh, do and to teach right so um look chapter 1 also uh, you know look chapter 1 says the same thing in as much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us and uh, verse 3 he says it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you an orderly account most excellent theophilus so he is talking about written communication of course so he's saying okay an orderly account okay so um, so this is something which is um, important it's uh, it's good for us to have it's a good skill for us to have it's good for us to invest time in uh, developing uh, good communication skills okay so um so it's needed um it is needed in any profession it's needed in ministry um and uh, more so in generally in life itself okay personally um you know if uh, between friends in a family setting right uh, between husband and wife communication and the fallout of bad communication uh, is something that we can see you know the effects of bad communication right the effects of bad communication wars have started right because of the breakdown of communication because communication actually points to relationship Okay. good communication strengthens the relationship uh good communication um make sure that there is no uh, miscommunication 
right? Because of which um, there is strength in the relationship. You know, there is there is no misunderstanding, and there is effort to clear all misunderstanding. Okay, so it actually uh, is an investment in the relationship. Okay, so having said that, now uh, how do we develop our communication skills? How do we develop our communication skills, uh, especially when it comes to our interpersonal communication skills, where we are talking to people, maybe we are meeting them directly, maybe we are you know, doing something online. Um, so how do we do that? Okay. So we can just break it down to verbal communication, which means what we do with words, okay, with our speech, nonverbal communication, and thirdly, uh, and very important, but sometimes uh, neglected aspect of communication, which is listening. Okay, so verbal communication. Okay, and it, so it's about what we say, what we even write down, what is spoken, what is written. Um, we are, of course, emphasizing on spoken communication. Okay, the way in which it is done. Okay, uh, the way in which we communicate. Now, uh, when we communicate, we are also considering our audience. Okay, we are considering who we are communicating to. Having an understanding of who we are communicating to changes the way in which we communicate. Okay, so it could be a very professional communication, maybe an office setting, uh, maybe with a colleague. It could be a very personal communication. Right, with the family member, maybe with your spouse. Um, so we need to be mindful of that aspect. Okay, who am I communicating to? Okay. So if the if we are mindful of the audience, then we will also be mindful of the nature in which we communicate. Okay, can it be formal? Can it be informal? Can I take certain liberties? You know, where it's informal, we take certain liberties. You know, um, we we address people differently. Right. Um, so, can I take those liberties with this audience? Right. So, all this is very important. Okay. So, especially you know the example. Uh, if it's a if it's a child, then we need to obviously we need to change our style of communication. It needs to be simple words. It needs to be uh, effective. You know, communication in the sense effective uh, with our time because the child will not give much attention. If the if what we are saying is pretty long drawn, or you know, the child is going to be very impatient, right? So the child is going to give, uh, is going to have a short attention span. So all that uh, is is going to matter. Okay. So uh, so so we need to you know give that thought. Okay. Who am I addressing in in my communication? Okay. So let's look at. Um, uh, Non-verbal communication. Okay, so when we say uh, verbal communication, we understand. Okay, the words that we choose. Now, for example, uh, I just wanted to, you know, we'll just spend some time on verbal communication. You know, uh, when it comes to saying, when it comes to writing things down, you know, do we spend time just thinking, okay, uh, uh, or reflecting, how else could I have said it? Right? How else could I have written this, and uh, so that it's much more effective? Okay, so having that, um, uh, having that kind of a, uh, what I would say, a test, or having that process in place would really help us. You know, where we, some of us are, you know, we, we just put it down and then we send it out. Right, maybe, and then once it's when we type send or when we just enter, we're like, oh no, I I wish, you know, uh, I wish I hadn't put that. I wish that you know I needed to change that. So, um, so this whole thing of um, you know checking, you know, is there some, is, does it does it convey all that I needed to convey? Okay, so does this choice of words does it work? You know, especially when it comes to you know maybe emails or maybe, excuse me. Maybe the text that we are sending, you know, does it really? Oh, excuse me. Uh, does it really convey what I needed to convey? Okay. So um, maybe we'll just um, we can just do a small exercise. Okay. 
um, let's say um, you are talking to um, maybe uh, maybe you're just sending out an invitation. Okay. <laughs> Consider two two sets of audience. One is a formal uh, uh, formal audience. Maybe you know maybe it's a um, People who you know, your superiors, your uh, whoever, and you're calling them over for dinner, okay, at your house. You're calling your maybe uh, your office staff, your colleagues. You're calling them over for, and your boss, you know, uh, leadership, everyone. You're calling them over for dinner. So why don't you just type out uh, uh, maybe a two-line or three-lines invitation, okay? So dinner, uh, you're just calling them, inviting them over for for a meal, right? So uh, now the setting is that it's a formal thing, right? It's it's people whom you you can't say they are pals, they are friends. You meet them at office and uh, you have a working relationship with them. Okay, so that's the first scenario. So can you just go ahead and put it put it down? Just since all of us are on the, on connected, you can just type type it, text it. Yeah, your colleague, your boss, boss, your team leader, you know, it's like that, right? So you're just inviting them over for a dinner, for a meal at home. So it's a, it's a formal, uh, informal, you know, informal uh, in the sense it's an informal setting at home, but it's, uh, yeah, the people whom you are formally connected with, right? Okay. So can you do that? Let's take uh, five minutes, right? Um, and then maybe we can have another scenario, right? Okay, if you're done, you can uh, you can present it. I mean, you can just post it. Sorry. Okay. So it, it needn't be long drawn, right? So it can be two, three sentences, and uh, yeah. So whoever's done can put it on the chat so we can take a look at it. OK, just press Enter. Come on. <laughs> Let's, uh... OK, so we have from Jean-Paul. OK, dear team, we have organized our daughter's birthday celebration at our home this Saturday at 6 PM, followed by dinner. We would love to have each of you join us for this, looking forward to seeing you. Wonderful. So there's time, there's address, um, and uh, yeah, residential address, and where, where they should come, what time they should come. And uh, so this puts it as dear team. OK, nice. So uh, would you also, uh, yeah, so I think, I guess uh, you can address your boss also. Your boss also is included in that, right? When you say dear team. OK. OK, who else? Jeffina, you done? Press it, press enter. Okay, anyone else? Rosalind, uh, Zelitoli, um, Georgia, anyone else? Also. Okay. OK, Subhashish, uh, sir, I'm very glad to tell you that my son Steve is celebrating his birthday on 24th September. 
Um, so we'll be happy as a family to have you and your family and bless a child and have a dinner uh, at our residence. Yeah, thank you. I shall be there. <laughs> uh, 24th. OK. Right. Okay, so it's even more formal, right? Uh, so which means that, um, yeah, so which, which actually reflects the kind of relationship that you might have with the person um, that you're addressing, right? And also, um, it also talks about the, uh, uh, maybe the communication style also, right? That you normally would have uh, when you're writing to elders. It also talks about the culture, Everything, you know, all that is reflected in what you're writing. Yeah. OK. Anyone else? Hmm. OK, so Jeffina, Jeff good evening, sir. As I've arranged a small dinner at home, it's been an honor to have you as part of the occasion. Thank you. OK, nice. OK, so the thing is, um, yeah, so we, you know, if you if you look at it, uh, I'm just looking at the first one. So, dear team, right? And uh, what is the event? Organize birthday celebration, home time, everything, and uh, and you know. So you see that. And the second one from Subhashish, uh, you see the way he's addressing. Uh, it's it's for me addressed to me, and then but then it's like, you know, he's saying respected, uh, etc. You know, uh, and. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, so Jeffina has one. You know, it's like okay, it'd be an honor to have you as part of the occasion, and uh, yeah, okay. So so we see that it's uh, it's really formal. Okay, uh, now let's say you know if you are going to uh, invite a group of friends. Okay, now these are people whom you whom you meet every uh, every other day. These are a group of friends. So how would you send uh, the same text or the same uh, email or content, right? Um, so I just asked the three three of you to do it again. It's for uh, you know, your friend or your or relatives. Maybe let's just keep it to friends, right? Friends whom you know, whom you've grown up with, so they are very close. So how would you, you know, the same thing, the same occasion, the same um, uh, you know dinner, same date, whatever. So how do you change that? OK, anyone? Um, not yet. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, others also, you know, if you want to change uh, some of their content, and uh, you can use that, and you can maybe make it a little more informal and personal. Because if it's for your friend, uh, you could do that. Okay. Hey, people. I have planned to have a small dinner at my place tonight. Hope to see you all spend a good time together. Okay. Right. So you see, uh, the whole thing changed, right? The the formality of the the tone of the letter is different. Um, everything has changed. Okay, the same would also apply if we are okay, guys. This Saturday we have planned Shekinah's birthday. So you see, you know, the daughter's name is here. He's a little more. He's closer. Uh, and then see, okay, see you. Okay, so he's just taken. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, uh, we would love to have each one of you join. Nothing like that. Say, so guys, just be there. Okay. <laughs> So I can literally, you know, imagine John Paul saying that this has dinner at our place, okay? Right. Okay, Zelitoli, we cordially invite you to come celebrate our wedding anniversary with us on. So it's a formal thing, okay? We are glad and blessed. Oh, it's a, is, is a, so Zelitoli, is it for friends and family? Um, is it for friends and family? Okay, is it, for, it is for friends and family. Okay, Subhash is, says, okay, hey, Suraj, as you know, Steve is celebrating his birthday. So please don't forget to come as a family. Okay, so we see that, um, you know, the whole tone, everything changes. Uh, the content changes. The way in which you present content also uh, changes, right? And uh, Zelitoli, it's it's actually a, it's a kind of a mix of both, 
like it's a it's a wedding anniversary is a special moment and at the same time you know this is for friends um uh, and it it kind of uh, has a weight because of the occasion you know it's a wedding anniversary it's not like a you know it's uh, it's it's something solemn as well and so you know so she's using words, words like and also respecting the friends you know we're glad and blessed to have bonded uh, graces with your presence on our special day so it's talking about the you know the nature of the occasion so he's choosing these words right so yeah so we we see that we choose words when it comes to communication we choose words uh, differently when it comes to the audience whom we are communicating to okay so uh, it would help you know and th this would actually be as the more and more we communicate the more and more we consider whom we are communicating to it will become second nature to us right uh, so we don't have to think too much to say okay how do i say this how do i put it across to this person right uh, we will we will we, it'll become the i mean we will take time but it will not be like we won't be meditating on it for a long time you know we won't be sitting on it but we will think uh, through and say it and also the same would uh, happen uh, when it comes to uh, let me just share the notes again um, um okay sorry So the same would happen when it comes to uh, the nature of the content, okay? The nature of uh, what we are um, actually sharing. Now, this is a fun event. This is a special event, and so you know, it's like this. You know, what if it's a difficult thing, right? What if it's a difficult matter that you're conveying? Okay, maybe you're conveying to someone that uh, some bad news, right? What if you're conveying to someone? That um, well, that they, they that that they cannot be part of your organization anymore, according to the discussion that you had earlier. You know things like that, right? Some difficult things. Uh, what if it's um, a disciplinary uh, action that you're conveying? You know, um, so it's best to think through. Like these are things that um, uh, it's best to think through, and also it's best to think about what will be the best mode of communication okay see communication can go through different medium right different modes you can text it you can email it you can um, well uh, you know you can do all that right you can do it online you can do all that so uh, it's important for us to consider okay what is the best way to do this now can i do this over a text can i do this over an email or does it require that I actually meet with the person, sit with the person, and uh, have a conversation and communicate this? Right. So, so understand that. So uh, many times we think, okay, maybe I'll just send an email and it'll be done. No, it cannot be done. Right? Because your email, as much as we can, you know, use a lot of emojis and you know everything, the email is something or a text is something where we read the emotions in the recipient actually uh, excuse me the recipient of the communication I know let's say it's it's a written communication you read the emotions in you put the emotions in based on your experience and etc you you put the emotion in right so let's say a line like let the children come to me Okay, Jesus says, let the children come to me, for theirs for, is the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Let the children come to me. Okay, So you can actually put a lot of emotion there. You can just say, OK, he was rebuking these disciples. and Let the children come to me. Let them come to me. Or it could be a very kind, inviting, compassionate voice saying, let the children come to me. Right? Uh, or it could be a rebuke. Whatever you know, we put in those emotions there, right? Uh, and so also, when it comes to be a text, we put in emotions. So if it's a difficult matter, we uh, even though it could be written very compassionately, right? Um, the recipient would 
him uh, you know he or she tends to put the emotion and so you are you you, you decide okay uh, does this communication does it require a, a face to face meeting okay. so uh, that's part of sharpening our skills where we understand that the nature of the content what i need to share is such that i cannot take a chance with a email where it can be miss understood where they cannot really understand where I'm coming from like right? the heart of what I'm sharing where I'm coming from so you know if you have an option what are not, what are not, can we meet can we have an online uh, or can we have a zoom call or a you know a video call these are options if these options are not there then of course understandable this is how it is. So you can say, you know, I will explain later in person when we meet, right? Or maybe even wait till you meet in order to uh, share this. So all this goes in, right? So we see that it, it's not so easy, right? I, 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 there is a risk of being misunderstood. There is a risk of being not understood at all. So um, based on the importance of the content, you know, let me. Uh, you know, take time. Let me choose how to uh, use this. Right? Okay, nonverbal communication. Okay. So when we say nonverbal communication, we are talking about uh, expressions. We are talking about uh, expressions, meaning facial expressions. We are talking about the level of uh, volume or the loudness of it, the softness of the voice. Uh, if it's a verbal communication, we are also talking about, um, you know, what is the tone of it? What is the pitch of it? So tone meaning, is it a stern tone? Don't do that. It's a stern tone. Or don't do that. You know, that's a very compassionate tone. So all these are non, even though the words are there, so the, the non-verbal thing enhances or adds to the communication. Okay? Um, and also, you know, the distance between the... Uh, people who are communicating, right? Um, and and also, you know, several gestures, gestures like hand gestures, or you know, maybe is their hand uh, crossed? You know, are this like that? You know, is the gesture closed? Is it open? Uh, is it vulnerable? Okay, so all these add to the message that you're communicating. You know, and if the if the if the message is joy, uh, you know, the joy of the Lord. And throughout that message, if you've not even just smiled once, and if you're going to have a very angry expression throughout, right, and if you're going to give a message on the joy of the Lord, uh, then there's a disconnect. Disconnect between the content and your facial expression. And uh, maybe, you know, you, it's a very serious tone that you've taken. There's a complete disconnect, right? Okay, so we need to be mindful. What is the... Uh, uh, what are the nonverbal communications? So, um, when we when we look at nonverbal communications, here are some things um, that we can uh, consider. Okay, nonverbal communication helps people to reinforce what is said in words. Okay, so it it's like highlighting, it's like underlining, right? It's like making something in bold. So it reinforces. So when you say something, and when you say, I know, I I want it done. So I want it done is without the gesture, and when you say I want it done, you know what is the difference? It means that you, you know, you 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 are very serious about it, and you want the task, that thing to be completed, right? You want it done, so you're actually adding to that, right? You're enhancing uh, the the message, okay? Okay, so uh, verbal communication also informs people about our emotional state. Okay, so so we can say um, say things like um, yeah. So we can say you know uh, things like oh, very good. Let's say you know very good. Okay. So what is it? Is it a compliment? What do you think? And I say, okay, oh, very good. 
is, is it a compliment or not? It seems like it, right? Seems like it, right? Oh, very good. Okay, but it also depends on on why I'm saying that. Okay, in the context, right? So suppose uh, somebody does something, I'm looking at you know something they they had done, and then I say, very good. Okay, and uh, it's it's like a compliment. Let's say somebody drops a cup. <laughs> okay, and I'm saying the same thing. Oh, very good. So it's the same tone, the same words, right? But I'm using it in a different context, and it's like a very sarcastic, you know, uh, thing. I'm just making fun. You know, I'm just putting them down and say, "Oh, very good," right? So, so we see that it's the context in which we use it, and also the tone in which we say it. So it 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 actually conveys these non-verbal. We're talking about the tone uh, actually conveys our emotional state. You know, what emotions are we feeling when we convey it? And suppose somebody does something and then you're saying, yeah, yeah, very good. Mm. So which means that you're actually upset, you're angry, you know, you're not really pleased with what is happening, right? So it's same words, but because of the tone and because of the context, uh, what we are conveying differs, right? So nonverbal communication actually conveys, um, is a pointer to the emotional state of the person. So, um, which is good, you know, as a, as a communicator, so you're reading that, right? You're reading those things. You're speaking to someone, and this is what they're saying. So when you see that, you see that uh, when you read that, when you analyze that, you see that they are they are saying things like very good, but actually they are not complimenting me. You know, they are actually upset. So a good communicator has to really take that. You know, um, like so, some people, if they don't have that skill. Uh, they might miss this completely, right? Um, certain emotional conditions, you know, people are struggling with that, are not able to read that. So socially, you know, they have the difficulty. You know, I'm not able to read that. I'm just going by the words, and I thought it was a compliment, but it's not, right? Okay. Um, what are the what, what what can say? You know, nonverbal things actually, nonverbal communication actually defines or reinforces relationship between people. Uh, because people, you know, the rate of speech they use, the the, the gestures, um, actually, they they try to mirror, you know, uh, the same things when uh, smiling, etc. These are non-verbal. So when people smile, you the natural response is smile back. If the smile is not there, then you know that okay, something is wrong. Somebody is angry today, right? All those. Okay, it provides feedback to the other person. Okay, so when when you are speaking and then people are nodding, when they are, you know, looking um, at you, you know that they are listening, that they are, uh, maybe they understand, and based on the expression, you know, if they maybe frown, um, or if they are, you know, if they are not really with it, you see that you understand. You I mean, you come to the conclusion that hey, uh, maybe what I'm speaking doesn't make sense. It's not really really going to. Maybe they're not in agreement, right? So it provides feedback to the person who's speaking, okay, and it also regulates the flow of uh, con uh, flow of communication. Meaning, um, so for example, if let's say you know, okay, that's it. That means it's done. We are done with the meeting, right? Or maybe some people can say, uh, fine, okay. So that means that uh, you know, we are done here. You know, it's the end of the subject. End of the matter. Uh, let's move on. Okay, so it regulates the flow of uh, communication. So we can we can use that. Uh, we can use that to convey. And when we read that, we we can also understand. Okay, the person is is not in a mood for further things. So we can. It might as well. You know, we can just say. Okay, let's talk later when you have the time. Okay, so these are things that we can. Uh, understand. Okay, let's look at quickly look at. Uh, okay, maybe probably we'll do that next class. Um, we just have one more minute. Okay, so these are types of nonverbal communication, uh, body language, posture, etc. Um, I think we'll we'll look at it in the next class and then go on to listening. Okay. Fine. Hey, okay, thanks everyone, and thanks for the invitation. <laughs> for the dinner. <laughs> okay. All right. God bless. We'll meet again next class. Bye bye.